Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Yesterday, I talked about my arrival here in Kentucky, and I'm still here, but I, I'm packing up and leaving. I'm ready to go home, and I think I found my purpose yesterday afternoon of why I stayed. But anyway, and who knows, you know, he loves to set me up in more than one situation, so I have great expectations when I leave today. I know that my journey home is going to be wonderful. I mean, I get out of bed expecting him to impact someone's life forever and ever and it never be the same working through me. I just expect it every day. So anyway, yesterday I was talking about my arrival here in Kentucky and the restaurant scene. That's what I called it because it was a scene. I mean, it was a crash. And look, let me, let me say this really because I need to correct myself because I never want to come off as pious or better than anybody. And, um, and sometimes I listen to what I say over after I record it, and I think, oh, I, I didn't say that right. Listen, I'm not trying to make anybody feel like they're not good enough or that I'm better than them or anything. No, I'm just talking about my growth and what I see. And I said something about how everybody just stared at the guy. Look, that's pretty normal. I mean, when you hear a crash and plates dropping and breaking, they weren't really trying to make him feel bad. They were just looking to see what in the world has happened and everything. And so please forgive me if that came off wrong yesterday. All I was saying, but you know, I, I made a point here too, and it really is a good point to think about. You know, the world trains us to stay away from people and things and events and things like that. And it's like, when we hear something like that in a restaurant, it's like, okay, all I can do is just be an onlooker and just sit here and I can be curious and look to see what's going on, but I can't go get involved. And that's what I was trying to show you yesterday is that we as believers don't have to live by the rules that the world teaches us. Don't talk to people. Don't touch people. Don't get involved. That is not how Jesus lived. And that's not how I live. Did you know, if somebody don't want me to pray for them, they get the opportunity to tell me no. But I'm not going to decide that for them. Okay? I give them opportunities to receive the kingdom of God, and then they can decide if they want to receive or not. But I will not stand before my Lord and say, well, you know, I just figured they wouldn't have wanted me to. I mean, I just walked by and I saw them, and I thought, oh, no, they're not going to let me talk to them. And he's like, you know... You're the 10th person I sent to them, and you didn't do what I needed you to do. I'll never hear that from him. I'm not going to live that way. I think I broke free of a lot of religious, well, number one, a lot of worldly things that were taught and brainwashed to believe. And, uh, you know, so don't pray in public. Don't offend people. When you ask people if you can pray for them, it's going to offend them. Well, you know what? If I had a million dollars and I saw somebody that was hungry on the street and I pulled over and said, hey, can I feed you? I bet I didn't offend them. I bet they're like going, yeah, I'd love to have something to eat. So that's kind of how I see uh, people who are sick and, and needing help. Uh, Jesus was the answer. He was the answer to anybody he saw. He was what they needed at the time, and that's my goal. And I'm always respectful. Uh, I'm going to ask and be kind to people. But let me move into something else I want to talk about, okay? Okay. Um, well, I was talking about me being at the restaurant and noticing the boy and everything, and, and I actually got to uh, talk to him just a little bit about Jesus, okay? But the next thing I want to talk about, when I did the, uh, the early morning service uh, on Sunday morning, uh, this man came up to me, right? And when I, held, when I walked up to him, and I uh, held out, I said, what can I do for you today? And he held his hands out. And when I took his hand, he kind of pulled back and went, oh, like that. And because I didn't look at his hands, I was looking in his eyes, right? And when he pulled, kind of, he didn't pull his hand away from him. He just jerked a little bit because when I put my hand on him, what happened is he had hit his hand on a chair or something, but he had torn it and it was bleeding. And uh, when he pulled his hand, I said, oh. And he said, oh, I hurt my hand when I came up. It, it, it's okay. It's just you touched it there. And I said, oh, no, no, no. This ought not to be. Did you know I put my hand on his hand? And I just rubbed across where it was bleeding. I rubbed across it. And I said, no, no more bleeding. No. 
And then I said, okay, now, that's done. What, did, what do you need? What do you want today? And, of course, he said that he had been to the doctor with something on his lung, a spot or something, and he wanted me to uh, pray for that. So I did. I laid hands on him, you know, up here on his chest, and I spoke to his lungs. But here's the beauty of this story. His wife was standing there watching, and guys, I didn't even look at his hand. After I said it, I moved on. I didn't just stand there and glare at it to wonder if it was going to keep bleeding or not. I, I, I don't really do that. I just say it, I decree it, and I move on. And I'm always talking in the name of Jesus, so people are, are going to watch this later. Sometimes I forget that there's new viewers that, I, that, that don't know how much in love I am with Jesus, so they're like going, oh, she didn't say in the name of Jesus. She's a heretic. I'm not a heretic. And if you want to believe that in your heart, that's okay. Because you're the one that is walking uh, in judgment against everybody. I love Jesus, and I love him every minute of my breath. I love him while I'm asleep. And uh, his name is always on my lips. But anyway, I just needed to put that out there. So I spoke in the name of Jesus. I always do. And I represent the kingdom of God. I know who I am. Uh, people can say whatever they want to about uh, may not say in the name of Jesus enough. That's okay. Just that, that's, that's, that's where they're at. And if that's where they're at, that's just, I've got to give them grace. Grace is giving people time and room to grow. Time and room to grow. Not all of us are at the same place. We're all where we're at. And hopefully we're headed forward to grow and be more like Jesus. So it's okay. But I know that I represent the kingdom of God. I know who my Father is. I know who my Lord and Savior is, and He is my Lord. And I know the power and authority that He has put in me, Holy Spirit's in me. I'm going to walk this earth, and I'm going to walk and talk and do just like Jesus because that's what He asked me to do. He said, if you love me, you will do what I've asked you to do. You will obey me. He asked us all to go out and be the light of the world, to show people who Jesus is, and the kingdom of God. So anyway, let me keep going. So I was uh, got through talking to this, uh, you know, speaking to this man's lung issue and, in the name of Jesus and everything. And what I did not realize is that his hand did absolutely, immediately, immediately dry up and stop bleeding, which his wife saw and was like, oh my goodness, and he did too. He noticed it as well about that. And so, you know, we do have what we say if we believe in our hearts. What we speak, we shall have. Okay? The next thing, I let me see. I haven't gone too long today, so I'm going to talk a little bit about another man that came up. And, you know, a, a lot of times I'll just ask somebody, what do you want today? Because that's really, that's really what the heart of God is. What do you want today? What can I help you with? Okay? So he told me that, uh, and, and he has suffered with this back pain for a long time, right? And he wanted to be healed. Guys, before, when I reached just to, uh, to, to lay my hand on him, this grown man started falling backwards, and the Holy Spirit and the power, Jesus said he felt virtue leave him. That word virtue means power. And I just went to put my hand on him, and it was like the force that was coming out of my hand. This grown man, and I was I hadn't even touched him. Look, I do not push people down. Now, I will follow them down. If I put my hand and they start going backwards, I'm not pushing them, but I'm not going to lose contact with them. Uh, and there's different teachings on that, but that's okay. Uh so I, when they start, I do com remain contacted with them because I want them to get the full download of what Holy Spirit wants them to get. Uh, so I will actually go ahead and follow people all the way to the floor and until I feel like Holy Spirit has finished downloading, that's when I'll remove my hand. But anyway, I didn't even get my hand on the man. I just was like, you know, about this far away from him, you know. And as I got close, and he just started stumbling and falling backwards, just like, whoa, whoa. And, uh, of course, there was people behind him, and they kind of braced him up. He didn't fall on the floor, but they braced him and held him. But I went on in, man, and I just laid my hand on him and started praying in tongues and commanding that back to be healed. And then I've just put my hand on his back back there, and I'm sure it was exactly where it was hurt because I just let God put my hand wherever he wants to. 
And when I got through, I said, okay, you're, you're healed now. You can go play. And he's like, okay. And he starts stepping and moving around. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And so I looked at him. I gave him just a minute. I said, are you pain free? And he said, yeah, I think so. I said, no, 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 no. I don't want to think so. I need to know, are you completely pain free? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, then walk with me. And yesterday on my snippet, I said, and I did some running. I did because we started walking together. And then I'm like going, okay, let's do the Hitler march, you know, where we're throwing our foot straight out in front of us. I said, I want to use your back. I want you to use it and tell me you're completely out of pain. And he said, I'm completely out of pain. I said, well, let's prove it. Let's run. So we ran back and forth. And look, it's not as a spectacle, but I wanted him to go ahead and put in use the miracle that he just received and not just, you know, because sometimes the devil will talk us out of our healing and what's really happened and we'll start sitting there thinking, oh, well, wait a minute, maybe it, yeah, no. So I just wanted to put in use and make sure that what he received, he went on and walked it out literally and ran it out. And so anyway, that's just two little things or three that I wanted to talk about today. Uh, tomorrow, I guess, if y'all want me to, I'll keep talking about some of the miracles and healings that I saw here in Kentucky, or I can go back and start teaching again. You know, I love to teach. And I, but, but let me, before I close, this is, God just dropped this in my heart, and I want to say this. I don't think I've ever said this before, but I'm going to say it more often because I wrote it down after I got here yesterday soaking in the Word and along with Holy Spirit. I said this two or three times when I was preaching in this church. Jesus said he was truth, and if you do not know what's written in red, you do not know truth. You have to know what is written in red to know truth, because Jesus is truth. And if someone is saying something opposite or opposing to what's written in red, they do not know truth, and they need to read what's in red. And you need to be careful with what you believe and what they're saying and line it up with what Jesus said. Jesus is truth. You cannot know truth unless you know Jesus and you know the words that Jesus spoke. I love you, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Okay? Bye-bye.